People are sheep. I found the above an interesting experiment and if you scratch beneath the surface it it makes you question a lot of your inner workings especially as an entrepreneur. Whilst I'm fairly sure that I wouldn't have stood, would I have questioned it in my head? Perhaps felt a little anxious because I wouldn't join in without knowing why? Would it affect how I might react whilst no one was in the room? More cautious when I did hear the beep elsewhere. Would I have thought differently of the woman joining in? Would I have though everyone was crazy? Would I have thought less of them for feeling left out? It's all relative, how your thoughts and opinions manipulated by social norms and abnorms. In the greater view, it's a concept that is very intertwined in success, in both understanding why markets move the way they do. Why customers are emotive in the way that they are and even down to whether you are making your own decisions through a crowd mentality without even realizing it. It adds to the old outage to surround yourself by people who strive for success, but it also adds caution to assess how that influences you. I can't say that I would not stand up, but it is certain that questions would be asked and conversation would be going on. There is humor in a lot of antics that we do. I like to look for that and bring it up in conversation. I also spend a fair portion of every day assessing our automatic reactions to events or beliefs. Beliefs are man made. They are ingrained into us by society. Our emotions do much more than make us feel. They are strong communications to ourselves on how we are reacting to our made up belief systems. Take the Kepernick situation for example. Why do any of us give a flying FCK about it? Because of some made up pride or strong beliefs? I initially had strong emotions about it but came to the conclusion that it did not matter in my life. So, why be bothered? I do not write this to feel myself now superior by any means, or to feel myself better, or judge any other person. I just promise you that I would have never ever joined by standing up without knowing why and said who? This behavior is so visible on airports, I call airports sheep farms. Last week I went to the desk at the gate to ask something about my boarding pass. 30 seconds later, 150 people behind me in a queue in front of the gate. 30 minutes before boarding I went back to sit down. They stood there for 30 minutes in line waiting. Then the boarding started. There was an escalator to go down. Big congestion on the escalator obviously. Above the escalator was a sign to the left for the elevator, I went there. People in queue for the escalator were looking at me like I was a maniac, and continued in queue. I took the elevator and was down much faster than most of the people. Then all people were queuing up on the front stairs to the plane, again congestion. I walked past the queue. People again looking at me like OMG what is this guy doing? They stood in the queue, and I took the back stairs, being almost as first in the plane while having boarded almost as last. You will end up first when you neglect the crowd. Follow your own beliefs. Ever seen the movie, The Wave? The reaction Kepernick God reminds me of how a group can become openly hostile to the person who doesn't conform. People with higher IQ level than particular mark have different mindset than the rest of a crowd. People with IQ less than 100 have no sense of morals, as well as objective thinking and ability to build complex and long logical chains, which is why it's so easy to manipulate them and they are the primary target group for all propaganda activities that aim to instill certain beliefs through inculcation and indoctrination. This ladder goes up and unlocks certain perks on certain levels of IQ, so it's crucial to have highly intelligent people in your team. When we recruit for businesses we work with, one of the first things we do with serious candidates for a job is Amthor's IQ test. When it's not possible, we test with EarSync. Many people don't believe that it's some kind of truly correct knowledge, but experience proves it. Is it worth watching? 
happens on daily basis since I was four years old. I can say two words about weather and get eyes full of hatred looking at me, just because I breathe in a non-conform way. I learn how to win people to my camp even if they hate me and this is the most valuable skill I've ever acquired. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Yes many people out there are easily programmed and programmable just like a computer. The elites and fast lane individuals like us are the ones that know how to make use of and capitalize on it. There is no wrong reason not to. It is human nature and when most of the crowd is going in the same direction, I do the opposite. All of the successful entrepreneurs I know personally are contrarians. Without exception. 100% of them? And none of them would stand up, out of principle. We're wired differently. I read How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie and have been working my way through Influence, Science and Practice by Robert Cialdini. Both are very good and I've successfully implemented teachings from both books. At the very beginning of Shildini's book, the first chapter, he talks about a this very phenomena. From my understanding we as humans use shortcut methods to make decisions faster and more efficiently given our increasingly complex environment. The behavior of the woman in the video makes sense because subconsciously she's using the shortcuts I saw everyone else is doing it so I thought I was supposed to also. She even said that to the guy that arrived after her. As said earlier, these methods can be used for malicious intent in manipulate people that are susceptible. Charles Manson supposedly became fascinated with manipulation after attending seminars by Dale Carnegie the same that wrote the book above. Stuff like this fascinates me to no end. It's kind of humbling in a way because it shows that deep down we're not much different from the other members of the animal kingdom. I have been saying for years on many forums that people are sheep. This is a fact, not my opinion. This is provable with logic, reason, maths facts and so on people laugh when I say that but not people's ignorance, opinion, feeling or beliefs. I would probably just leave the room, or ask what the hell everyone was doing. I didn't watch to the end but the video looks staged and everyone there is an actor or actress. I wouldn't be standing. I might even change my seat, to get a better view of the others. That's not entirely true. Even more predictive than IQ is the egg. The best predictive value is obtained while combining both. IQ, more than neck, is cultural or ethnical biased towards the Western society. Yet that doesn't mean that the Western world had more intelligent people. Only people scoring higher on average on a metric that has been created by our standards. No. There is no proportional relationship between IQ and morals. Actually you don't need my substantiation to verify this information, you can just use logics and fundamental knowledge you already have. But I will explain colon human IQ human intelligence points based off test results is first and foremost a certain level of ability to cognize, analyze information, draw correlations, apply logics and base knowledge off it. Understanding this, we know that colon certain information takes higher level of intelligence to understand it, which we can observe in situations where complex logical chains involved. Since every knowledge is a logical chain in its matter, and morals are a form of knowledge, we agree that they take certain level of intelligence to understand their very matter. From there we can either conduct a full-scale scientific research least efficient, least flexible or real life empirical research most demanding, most efficient, or just use logics and basic knowledge enough to evaluate information and verify its accuracy, to have a somewhat accurate understanding of what level of intelligence is required to be able to understand certain concepts. Studying psychology for 10 plus years, conducted thousands of interviews, taking notes on people on daily basis in regular life, from my empirical experience I can remember no people with IQ less than 100 who have actual understanding of morals or any other complex concept. You can test it yourself and ask people to explain how they understand certain morals, look at situations when they apply this knowledge in real life and how it's being applied.
you'll see a similar pattern to what is illustrated in Ops video, with a difference being that it's applied to utilization of moral concepts. There is a proportional relationship between IQ and pretty much anything. IQ tests are merely an instrument, more importantly, it's an instrument of a competent specialist, who by definition is not biased towards anything. It cannot be used by somebody who has no background in psychology, particularly in practical aspects of it. IQ points are nothing more than a metric that allows us to determine the most effective way of interacting with particular people. I, personally, use IQ tests in pedagogy to determine the best way to teach kids, because each one needs an individual approach. Again, it is not to take people down. There are people with IQ 90 who are more successful than people with IQ 150 plus, just because being able to learn something from first take doesn't make sense if you don't put any effort to learn it in the first place. This is how highly intelligent people end up working 9 to 5. The most intelligent person I know works for $2,000 or month in his late 30s. Thanks for a good conversation. I had you on ignore at first. Then, I thought about it and turned you back on because you are so amusing. Science and logic don't always go hand in hand. Just saying. Quantum mechanics. That was the joke. So, what happens if I don't stand up when the beep occurs? Do I get kicked out of the clinic? There is nothing to fear. In the Matrix movie, the traitor loves ignorance that is bliss and wants to return in the matrix. Remember the restaurant scene. The problem with truth is that we have to be adults and stand against stupidity. The IQ controversy is alive and well in this thread. Some scientists have argued that there are IQ thresholds beyond which people get more creative. For example, here's a peer reviewed 2013 article on the subject. Quote, we found thresholds only for measures of creative potential but not for creative achievement, for the former the thresholds varied as a function of criteria, when investigating a liberal criterion of ideational originality i.e., to original ideas, a threshold was detected at around 100 IQ points. In contrast, a threshold of 120 IQ points emerged when the criterion was more demanding i.e., many original ideas. Moreover, an IQ of around 85 IQ points was found to form the threshold for a purely quantitative measure of creative potential i.e., ideational fluency. Such research has been conducted since at least the 1960s. Hence, I wouldn't say that he's talking out of his ass entirely, on empirical grounds however, his morality hypothesis fails spectacularly to account for the phenomenon of psychopathy. Many psychopaths have documented high IQs coupled with the fatal flaw of being unable to distinguish between right and wrong. They can mentally understand that there are things society doesn't want them to do, but they just lack the feels required to get it themselves. So they continue to do their thing when nobody's around to punish them. Some of them kill people, others steal and almost all of them lie and deceive while faking emotions that they really lack. If anyone's interested, I highly recommend Professor Robert Hare's famous book on the subject. On the other hand, if you ever had any contact with a person with Down's syndrome, you will agree that while lacking intelligence, these people often display admirable moral qualities, mainly because they don't lie and deceive. But that's just my opinion you know, like everything else everyone writes on an internet forum. I also find the correlations between financial success and intelligence fascinating. But I won't derail the thread further just to enlighten everyone with my views sarcasm alert. That's actually a perfect example of what knowledge you have and how you will operate using it because the argument you start with and which arguments you use as your arguments shows how fluent you are. We're not having a diploma work here and I'm not defending a hypothesis. You're overestimating the strength of necessary substantiation professor equals or equals professor. Studying psychology or any other science on a decent level, the first thing you learn is to read quick and a lot. Because from 500 pages of text you can get a one paragraph of valuable information. So no, 
a professor would read this message from beginning to an end, focus on its very idea and ask about examples of empirical experience where this very situation is true plus details. You asked about substantiation, but what you actually wanted it to be, is to be based off a scientific research that is strict to neuroscience bookish truths. Go ahead, wait a century until such research is conducted of course you'll need to pass on all preceding researches that won't be strict, because skeptical hippo is skeptical, by that time, if you'll still be alive, you'll read four paragraph publication concluding the same thing, and I bet you'll read it in a newspaper and not on PubMed, you know why dot that's actually my mistake as it meant to be one piece of information takes more intelligence to understand than another which you understood perfectly, but tried to back up your own claim about presence of multiple logical fallacies in my statement. You will try to get over it, because your message is mostly demagogical, but we both know what you did here anyways, that's what you based your conclusion about multiple logical fallacies on? You asked about substantiation, because you didn't want to be a sheep. Funnily kind of information you really wanted to read to not appear as one in your eyes is what an average sheep would want. I don't think you even understand the irony here. You yourself didn't make any solid point as why it's not logical. Talking about science, here's some truth about strict scientific information you spend dozens of years to prepare to and conduct a strict full-scale research on subject so it will have as little flaws and be as bulletproof as possible, and you do this because you need to back up your claims on a serious scale before serious authority instances. You kids really think that all those studies and publications are made to prove your hyper-skepticism wrong? I know you'll say that it's for the sake of accuracy, but science doesn't work that way. It takes dozens of years to actually make it on paper for a knowledge that is widely used in some nitpick here fields and is considered a common sense inside that field. Apparently you thought that it's a strong punchline, but it showcases your ignorance at its finest. You might want to go to Stack Exchange to join people who spend dozens of years learning paper knowledge to plow the sand talking about science, it doesn't require any brain or specialty. Real scientists apply their knowledge practically and value empirical experience incomparably more. You think you play a smart kid here, but consider rereading this message a couple of times and then come up with something more strong than a claim about non existent multiple logical fallacies and something more serious than asking for strict scientific info, because I'm not defending my degree here. Meet some real life. Otherwise follow my advice from a previous paragraph. I believe that's enough. See? When you put ten fast learners in a clinic with a beeping sound and no one stands up, you'll get people who stand up because no one else stands up. These are the so-called anti-sheep. Real fast learners would sell or rent out their headphones to the highest bidder. And some things cannot be proven thank you. He came off a bit arrogant in his remarks, we need to focus on the reality of the present and picture the future. Not quantify or prove things. Things just happen. Ha 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 yes most definitely. I had a good laugh, but the moment I understood that it takes 5 seconds to look around and realize that 9 people out of 10 have zero understanding of the essence of morals. All the more a sense of them, I felt that arguing doesn't even make sense. Nitpick the hell out of it. Thank you can't argue with people because they don't even have the tools to understand the situation we face. This is like teaching advanced maths to baby Eastis doesn't make sense. They may take responsibility, but do they take accountability? A woman whose purse gets stolen because she left it out of the table may be responsible. But if she's not accountable, she'll always keep getting robbed. Definitely worth it it's healthy to detach from people's opinions. What goes on inside a person's mind usually says more about their character than yours. That YouTube title must be wrong, it must be. Would be an interesting read if you're willing to share. Been in a somewhat similar situation. Not relating this to the discussion at hand, but if something truly cannot be proven, you might as well ignore it or assume it doesn't exist. 
it won't have an impact on anything. Can we stop using no true Scotsman fallacy? Seen this way too many times already, ranging from true fastliners to true internet arguments. No true Scotsman fallacy here. What I meant with truly cannot be proven is, you don't lack the methods of detection for example your telescope is not accurate enough yet but there is no way your argument can be either proven or disproven. If I say, there is an undetectable entity, with no physical form or any influence on space-time, which follows you around and thinks your jokes are hilarious. There is no way that statement can ever be determined to be either true or false. Scrolled to find this. It looks super staged. Also, even if it wasn't, looking at it with a less judgmental mind. It's not a sheepish behavior, it's an evolutionary reflex that aids us in living in society. The monkey experiment the one where the monkey gets threatened when he tried to grab a banana by other monkeys is the same. Can you learn limiting behaviors this way? Totally. But you can also learn the ropes of something by just copying other people. We learn by copying from childhood after all. Envodum an iPhone and Newtil isn't taper talk. Yeah believe it or not but pattern recognition and response is actually one of the reasons we have survived so long. It's also the reason why people survive. Go to school or college just because everyone does. Become mediocrity. Marry somebody and make kids, just because it's what people do. Live a mediocre life. Educate your kids the same way and sooner than later this pattern will end, because reproduction won't be accomplished. Life is a struggle where the strongest one wins. Modern society's most crucial skill is an ability to analyze and escape the common pattern. How people act in this video it doesn't matter if it's staged or not is exactly how people act in any other sphere of life. Hashtag hash divine or hashtag get where you're going but I was speaking in terms of cold hard life or death. You can only be the unique caveman so long when you don't catch on that the last three cavemen who ate poison berries died. What if you were walking down a hallway and all of a sudden a bunch of people came running and screaming the other way? Would you follow them? Or would you say no, I'm not a sheep, let's see what's going on around the corner. What if there was a bear or something dangerous around the corner and you died because you decided not to be a sheep? I think we do these things because our survival depends on it or at least depended on it a long time ago during our ancestors' daughters for IQ, it's a model. Just that. There are more than one. Are they wrong or right? You be the judge. In my opinion most Psych 101 theories and models are completely wrong and useless. And almost none are used in the aid of mental illness. Also it's funny because most people who think they are not sheep actually are. Somebody who is college educated is just as brainwashed by academia than somebody who is brainwashed by XYZ culture or ABC institution. I didn't see any mention of science in this article, just a lot of grandstanding and debating. Humans are socials animals. We have a mechanism called mirror neurons that causes us to automatically simulate something we witness another person do, and we still have a strong evolutionary need to fit in with the current situation for survival purposes. Some people are able to ignore or override those drives to a degree to a degree. 